Hello everybody, I'm Sniping is Fun and another video I want to bring you guys here today is uh, just a general thought that I just thought of within like the last day or so like something relating to a certain topic that a lot of Nintendo fans talk about and a lot of what Nintendo fans either expect or forget about or lose out on or ignore or whatever you really want to get to and, uh, and that's third party support on the Nintendo platforms and there are Nintendo fans out there that thrive for it, that really want to see it, and then there's the other Nintendo fans out there that ignore it for some reason or have that mentality, I can go elsewhere, which I really don't like that mentality at all. At least in its entirety. I'm not saying you can't go elsewhere, but to totally ignore the platform is kind of annoying to me, personally. But, you know, that's, let's get, I don't want to talk about that, uh, directly talk about the heat and all that stuff and the little what certain fans want and don't and everything. But um, I'm one of those fans that likes to see third-party games on Nintendo, and I support the ones that I can, both multiplayer and exclusives. And I like to see more of them because so, so Nintendo can't always keep their system, you know, up to date. They can't always pr like, you stop it from a drought. Like These games, these third-party games, on top of giving Nintendo fans more franchises and Nintendo fans more you know, games to play and everything, especially a lot of franchises that I know these fans like, hint, hint, wink, wink, RPGs, fighters, you know, Castlevania, Mega Man, stuff like that. Um, it, it helps, like, in preventing droughts, because Nintendo, unless Nintendo is able to bring out a game every month or a game every other month, like big name games, even multiple games a month, like games that will satisfy a majority of the fan base, Third party games are going to be needed. That's just a fact, people. But <clears throat> I'm not getting in here to talk about why I need third parties. I'm gonna my topic this time and what I really want to go into talking about is why I believe by the end of this generation <clears throat> and throughout it, I think Nintendo actually is going to be acquiring more third party support than I think some people are giving them credit for. I really do. Like during the generation till the end, they're gonna acquire stuff and be all prepared with more companies on board when the ninth generation comes up, and it's gonna be kind of like their handhelds. Like more companies will probably support it, and I have two reasons for why I think it's gonna be. This video is about the two reasons for why I think third parties are gonna start coming more to Nintendo in the near in the coming years. And when I say third parties, I'm mostly referring to the Japanese developers. However, I do think there will be some American and European you know, companies that do follow this trend as well. Probably just not as much as the Japanese developers. And more so when it comes to those companies, those like American and European, more so probably in the indie scene. Um, but I'm going to start with the number one reason I so far... Uh, <clears throat> think this way and it's basically um, nin Nintendo's trying to use these collaborations they're doing to build bonds with third parties to build friendships to build a, a, a tied knot like you know a close relationship with these third parties they're working on these collaborations they're working close with these companies so they can actually maybe build a relationship with them so they can rely on these companies to support them with games in the near future without having for, without them having to come to them for collaborations. They'll have a close enough bond of friendship to actually go out and do it. But let's look at some examples of what they've been doing with this. Uh, back on the Wii, we had T they worked with Team Ninja to make uh, Metro Other M. Uh, they kind of came close. They came working with like you know Tecmo with uh, Ninja Gaiden like at the beginning of this generation uh, with Ninja Gaiden Three. Uh, they worked with they're working with Platinum to get both. Uh, they got Wonderful One on One on board and they're working. They paid to get Bayonetta Two to be exclusive. Uh, they're working with Atlas with, with uh, the Shin Megami Tensei Crossfire Emblem game. And it's just recently we're seeing them, they're working with Tecmo Koei with 
to make the Warrior series to make Hyrule Warriors. They're making Legend of Zelda with the Dynasty and Samurai Warriors games. They're working with these companies to make collaborations, and when they get work these collaborations, they're working closely with them, which makes them help build relationships with these third-party companies. And then, which could help these games probably get n more known, get these companies more known on the Nintendo platform, and sell more, and then when they when they start there starts being a fan base, these companies will be so close to Nintendo they'll know the Nintendo way of helping me develop games and Nintendo help them get started that they can start releasing their own games on the platform. Like who's to say now that you know once uh, Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem you know hits and it's a big hit, oh we're gonna see Persona on the Wii or Shin Megami Tensei on the Wii or Persona on the 3DS or whatever other franchise Atlas has I don't really remember. Or, you know, now that the Hyrule Warriors is coming out, we're going to probably see, like, Samurai Warriors 4 or Dynasty Warriors 9 on the Wii U or whatever else they make. You know, the, 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 the Dynasty Warriors Gundam franchise or the one with the One Piece or the Bleach or whatever, you know, those, those other ones, those could potentially be on board, too. Um, more Ninja Guides might come in the future. You know, they, they'll get companies to help them. They'll help make, collaborate to make Companies' games like yo, Bayonetta 2 would never have been done if Nintendo didn't financially help Platinum make it. So like now that they did that and they are Platinum's kind of building a relationship with Nintendo. Who's to say without Nintendo even jumping in? Oh, okay, Bayonetta 3 exclusive to Wii U, you know, or another Platinum game exclusive to Wii U. Some big support coming from these a third party developer. You know, they work with these companies. And they get them into a relationship, a friendship that can make them close, close companies, close, you know, prospects, close like the, like businesses to work with. And then they won't really have to worry about third party support from these companies because these companies will be more willing, since they're used to working with Nintendo, to actually bring in their games out on the said platforms, handheld in consoles. So. That's like number one. Like you know, Nintendo's gonna be working on these collaborations, and I'm assuming there's more than just what we've seen, and we're probably gonna see them in future directs at E3. Um, they're trying to build close relationships because if you really think about it, Nintendo has had kind of bad, you know, third-party relations ever since Super Nintendo days and whatnot. When it, and they used to, the company before Iwata came on board. Uh, used to be really you know, aggressive towards these third parties, and I think since like other developers, came, like other companies like Sony and Microsoft came in the, on board, they probably I go okay, we can go work with them instead. Kind of you know whatever happened, I don't know. I'm not in the business. I have no idea. But I think they're trying to build relationships with these companies in order to make it so these guys can so they can be in close relations with these third parties, and these these third parties can be in close relations with Nintendo. Thus, making Nintendo be had a little more reliable feed of companies to rely on. Okay, we're not bringing games out now, but these companies are going to bring out games. We don't have a Mario or a Zelda or a Zero out, but you're going to be seeing, you know, a, a, you know, a Final Fantasy or a Kingdom Hearts or a Shin Megami Tensei or a Dynasty Warriors or a Castlevania or you know something like that. And I think they're go they're doing more collaborations with you know they're going to probably do collaborations with Square one day or Capcom or Namco or you know stuff like that, and those could help those companies get on board and release their games you know like Namco with Tales or Capcom with you know, Resident Evil or you know Square with Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy. Um, I don't think they're going to do it much with Western developers. But I could totally be wrong on that. I'm not going 100 percent sure. You never know. One day Nintendo can go to like EA and say, "Hey, we want you. To, we want to collaborate with you to make a Mac Rider," or they're going to go to Activision. Oh, we're going to collaborate you. You, we want to make like a Star Tropics or something, you know. Or we're going to collaborate with you. What pick one of your older franchises you hardly ever do, and we're going to support it. We're going to support exclusives for us, so you can rely on us to come on our platform with future multi-platform exclusives, you know, stuff like that. That's number one. Nintendo's going to work on collaborations and work on building relationships with these third parties, thus making it more unlikely that these developers will eventually come back and repay them later on by supporting them more. Number two reason why I believe this is a possibility that th Nintendo's going to get more third parties on board before the end of the generation is because uh, when it comes, because uh, the play, because 
when you look online, you look at, like, I've seen this on an article before, you look at the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One can be pretty expensive to work on. To make games for, and the Wii U is generally the cheaper way to go. But it's not necessarily a totally weak system. It's not like you're comparing the Wii to the PS3 and 360. This is Wii U, the PS4 and Xbox One, and the, tr and the and the gap is not as big, so you can still do quite a bit with the Wii U. So I think m some developers who, especially those in financial issues, Square, Capcom, and especially when it comes to Japanese developers, I this one is more Japanese than... Both of them are more Japanese than Western. That's why I say I see the Japanese developers jumping up more than the Western developers. But some Western developers would fall into either of these categories. The first one I said are this. Um, companies, that especially have financial issues, I think would more than likely want to jump because they don't have to spend as much money to make games and they don't have to make as much profit back to make games, but they can still go out there and make a game. Like, okay, Resident Evil. We're going to bring... Like, Capcom's like, I'm gonna, we're going to bring out Resident Evil 7. We don't have to spend as much money to make a really big game, and we don't have to get as much money back. Or, you know, swear with Pain of Hearts Final Fantasy, or any company for that matter, really. Um, I just think that since the PS4 and Xbox One can be pretty expensive to make games on, I'm not saying... I'm not saying for them to s ignore those other two systems. I'm saying they're going to see, since it's cheaper system to work on, that it's a viable platform to make their games for. That's what I was I'm thinking. I'm not saying ignore the other two systems. I'm saying, okay, we're going to actually make games on all three platforms rather than just two and ignore the other one. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like they're gonna, Since they're going to see it more viable, one, especially once the, this is more so once the sales go up and there's more of an install base, more people buying games, more people owning the Wii U, they're going to see that and say, like, okay, there's an install base there. There's a big, you know, a lot of games that they're buying. It's cheaper to make for the system. Let's 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 port over Resident Evil. Let's port over Kingdom Hearts. Let's port over Final Fantasy. Let's port over Shin Megami Tensei. Let's port over this. Let's make some of these exclusives. Let's do these multiplayer. Let's do these exclusives. That's what I think is going to happen. And it's going to be mostly a lot of companies that are more in financial issues. Like I said, Capcom and Square more and a lot of other ones. And. Really, that's the two reasons, and I kind of went off on a rant talking about these two in about 12 minutes now. But, um, but yeah, that's the two two uh, reasons why I think more third-party developers will be on board Nintendo platforms and supporting Nintendo more by the end of this generation. Like, there will be some that come on throughout, and then other ones that might wait longer and near the end. But by the time the ninth generation starts, Nintendo should have a hefty amount of third parties on board their platforms. Thus, they don't really have to worry about droughts because while they're making their games, third parties will be making their games, and they'll come out together. Then all Nintendo has to do is worry about their other franchises that are not in the Nintendo 7. And then we'll be all cool, Nintendo. Then we'll be all cool. You'll have all your franchises, and you have third party support, and all the fans will love you. And anyone that doesn't is lying. But yeah, the two reasons, like I said, more collaborations and getting close to these companies will build relationships and bonds, and they're going to repay it later on by being closer to them and bringing their games over without having to collaborate. And two, the Wii U being cheaper to make games for will make it more of a viable platform once the install base goes up to put your games on, because you can still make money off your games your multi-platform games and your exclusives that you might work with Nintendo for. I don't know, like, the first one, collaboration-wise. That's what I think. My name is Stipend is Fun. I hope you guys like this video. Put in the comment section what you think. Do you agree with these? Do you not? I'd like to see your thoughts and opinions. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to, and have a nice day.